right guys welcome to today's tutorial if you can hear me okay just someone type in the chat please thank you thank you oh wait i can't do that <laughs> no, yeah, 13 actually sleeps because <laughs> the the thing with the the uh, the schedules is that sometimes you have I know um, Mr. Infinity plus one streams um, around nine ish so I think um, 930 is pretty good okay so pretty much so we'll just get started everyone can hear me okay So I changed my OBS settings, so I don't know if um, if this yeah okay sweet. So we're just gonna get started. So with the so we've done this quite a few years now. Um, so with the exam preparation, it's more of a I would prefer if you brought um, if you brought questions over um, and I can answer them, and don't just ask questions like oh. Um, can you teach me the whole way quiz or organic? I can't do that. You know, if your teacher or yourself can't learn that in five to six weeks, don't expect me to be able to do that in one hour. Okay. Um, but really quick, just with, you know, if, if you, if you already done your school exams, then I suppose, um, you know, bad timing, but if you haven't, like my school is doing it tomorrow, it's more of a, you know, trying your best and, um, get the best outcome. So if, throw in the questions uh, but can I tell the questions for tomorrow yes I can I can tell you that there will be a question on polarity there will be a question on structure and bonding there will be a question on intermolecular forces um, yeah and pH at equivalence point you know those usual organic flow charts you get those okay but just really quick um, the just with 3.6, just with a quiz, because I, I don't know how many um, people take a quiz here. Um, but these are the two um, few equations you just need to remember, just for you, Danny. Um, so if you have a weak acid pH calculation, the biggest hint that you need to, um, that you know they have a weak acid pH calculation is that they give you something in the Ka, uh, in the format of K, there's something in there, and they want you to calculate the pH of this particular species. So this is when you use this equation of H3O plus equals the square root of Ka, you know, the Ka value times the concentration of the acid. If you have a weak base, the what you could do is just the opposite of what we have here. Um, if you have a weak base, you can just do OH minus equals the square root of Kb, times the concentration of the base. However, the step involves more question, um, involves more calculation, and I personally don't like putting numbers in calculators because that increases the chance of error. Um, so I would always recommend you use this equation, H3 plus equals um, Ka times Kw, divided by the concentration of the base. And how do you know when it's a weak base? Like they will say something like calculate the pH of NH3, like say 0.1 mole per liter NH3, and they give you the Ka of say, like, like NH4 plus. Okay, so they want you to calculate this pH and they give you the Ka of something else, which is obviously the conjugate acid of NH3, and this is when you just substitute numbers into this equation. And then you have the buffer pH and the buffer pH is more of a um, pH equals pKa plus log the concentration of the weak base in the buffer divided by the concentration of the acid in the weak buffer. Or you can use H3 plus equals Ka times concentration of acid divided by the concentration of the base. Okay, so it just these are the equations you need to use and you just need to know when to apply them. All right, so Josh had a question. Um, you playing explain the reflux and distillation thing. Okay, so I don't have a diagram here, but if you look at reflux, and I, I think you guys are a bit too young, but I grew up um, watching my parents cooking with pressure cookers, um, and that's what reflux is. If you think about it, reflux is just a my horrible drawings. Um, so you got a like a flask. Oh, that's a horrible drawing. Oh, I'm sure. um, so with reflux, how that works is that you have an enclosed, you have a closed system. 
So you have your the pear-shaped flask at the bottom, and then you have a condenser at the top. Then you can seal the top, and then what you can do, you can heat up, heat it up as much as you can, because what that does is that it increases the rate of reaction significantly, and you know um, nothing escapes, so nothing escapes, and then you can heat it as much as you can, and that ensures every bit of reactant will go, you know, will react, so you don't lose anything. Okay, so whenever you have anything that you need to oxidize, you know that you'd like say for example, if, if I want to turn, um, let's say ethanol to ethanol acid, I will just reflux the crap out of this. Okay, so I just put this in reflux. I, I don't want to make ethanol. I just want to yeah, ethanol acid. So you, it's like at the pressure cooker, you put every ingredient in the pressure cooker, and then you heat it up, and then you. Um, react you make the aldehyde they will evaporate but it hits a condenser drop back down further react again da -da -da -da, rinse and repeat and just super super fast rate reaction because you have um, loss of heat okay but with distillation distillation is when you want to in the year in the sense of application of um, distillation in, um, in year oh no, someone message me Someone message me. Yeah, someone message me. Yeah, never mind. Um, but with the distillation, um, the distillation process is when you, especially in year, in year thirteen, this is separating. Um, you have primary alcohol turning into a aldehyde, and this will further oxidize into a carboxylic acid. Right. So these two things that I've highlighted just now these two will have high boiling point and melting point because they have hydrogen bonding whereas aldehyde does have low boiling point let's say for example if i give them a numerical number let's say if this is 120 degrees this is 140 degrees and this poor guy is i say 60 degrees so what you could do you can heat this thing in, let's say at 95 degrees and what it does is that the alcohol cannot vaporize at this temperature so it's going to react to become aldehyde but as soon as, as the aldehyde is produced, it's going to vaporize, it's going to go through the condenser, it's going to drop down at this end. Okay, so how the condenser works is just a f you, you have the middle, so, so everything goes in the middle, but then you got water in, you got water out, and then that will cool it down, so it comes out as a liquid. Okay, so distillation is using the difference of boiling point to separate the mixture. So you can have a lot of different things mixed together, and then you can, you know, just do that. Okay, so on reflux and distillation, are we supposed to recognize the difference between fractional distillation and normal distillation? No, no, not required. And additionally, could you please explain dissolvability of molecules in water? Okay. Um, so dissolving, actually, if you give me one sec, where is Miss Yuhin's question? I kind of explained to her already image okay so this will help you paste image okay. why can't I copy it copy it no why don't you let me copy open original copy image paste image okay sorry it's a bit small okay so this is from one of our school exam questions so you can have a you can have a look at it um, you know, so this is actually one of the tough questions here. Um, so the the energy that we're looking at here, so we're looking at um, solubility. Why is the solubility in water? So we're dissolving C2H6 and CH3F, both of them we're dissolving it in water. Why does the solubility differ? Um, with these two molecules okay so for this particular question now this one's hard um, so we need to you know how we look at entropy so whenever you see the to see the word entropy and um, we're looking at spontaneity okay um, not so much about spontaneity in this particular question but what we need to look at the entropy change so we are looking at dissolving we're looking at dissolving gas in a liquid in water so straight away, if you think about it, I'm so this 
gas have high entropy when it dissolves in water it actually you're gonna have lower entropy because you're forcing your gas to stay in the liquid so your entropy actually decreases okay so this is not what would naturally happen but then your fluoromethane will still dissolve in water because you look at the solubility is fairly high why is that because CH3F and water molecules they are both polar so what that means if you think about it why do things dissolve okay so if this is my water molecule this is my H2O 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 and in here is my CH3F CH3F I'm, I'm, it's not a gas it's not a liquid right I'm just drawing them here so at the beginning this is the force of attraction that we're looking at the existing force of attraction is between the CH3F molecules and then the H2O molecules so that's the force of attraction that's holding them together but why does it dissolve is that if you put them in the beak if you mix them together the water and then the CH3F these guys will form intermolecular forces as well why does that why does that happen because this force of attraction is stronger than this force of attraction and this force of attraction okay so it's more stable for these guys to dissolve and become this so therefore if you think about it why, why do chemicals react they react because they want to go from high energy higher energy to lower energy so you would have released energy so this process is exothermic okay so this process is exothermic and that means the entropy of the surrounding of the surrounding increases so that makes it more spontaneous okay if you look at the other one because this is relevant to solubility you can see your question there um, so if you look at the other one was C2H6 this guy is non-polar okay and your water is polar so if you mix these two together the C2 the C2H6 are gonna not the most interesting people in parties and stuff not very interesting you know whereas your water they have hydrogen bonding and inter, you know strong intermolecular forces so these guys are going to interact with each other and these guys are going to interact with each other so if we force them to go hey why don't you go hang out with the water the water is like no I don't want to hang out with you my force of attraction between the water molecule is stronger than the you know than the C2H6 so there's no solubility all right in terms of solubility it's very very poor because of the difference in the strength okay so hopefully that helps um next one can you explain the chemical tests that we do to distinguish organic molecules um so there are quite a few here um i'll just speed round them so the easiest one is bromine water bromine water this lets you to distinguish alkene and alkanes um, alkanes you also need uv light and this is a slower reaction so with alkene your, al your bromine water goes from orange to colorless straight away with LK, it goes from orange colors in a few minutes with UV light. This is what we normally call a test for saturation. Okay, so it's testing for double bond, test for saturation. And then you have the water. Now, this is something I learned this year. Water is amazing to identify acyl, chlor acyl chloride or acid chloride. You're going to see white fumes, and if you test a fume with limbs paper, they'll turn red. Um, you also have carbonate carbonate is amazing at distinguishing uh, what's that called um, carboxylic acid because you're gonna see co2 bubbles because acid plus carbonate give you salt water and co2 gas you're gonna see that um, and then you have your Tolens reagent Tolens as well as Benedict solution um, so what these do this you know these are all good for prime uh, prime aldehyde um, aldehyde okay so your tolerance reagent will go from so uh, will make a silver mirror your benedict solution will go from a red, uh, from a blue solution to red slash orange precipitate um, and then you have the lucas reagent lucas reagent is not really part of the syllabus but this is this is good for distinguishing primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohol. 
Um, so this thing will turn cloudy with the um, cloudy with the um, tertiary alcohol straight away, whereas it doesn't really react with the primary alcohol. All right, so these are your normal chemical tests. And then you have the Limits paper test that lets you distinguish amines. Amines are alkaline, so amine will turn Limits paper blue, and then your carboxylic acid will turn it red. And then you can use solubility, you can use water as well to look at solubility. Your alkanes, alkanes, haloalkanes, etc., will not dissolve in water. Whereas your alcohol, your carboxylic acid will dissolve in water, etc., etc. Okay. All right. Do, 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 do. All right. What's uh, which one says? I'm. Oh my God! Stop talking about TFD. Do we need to know how to? Do we need to know how to distinguish different? Alcohol, so I kind of just did it here. So you got a primary alcohol, tertiary alcohol, um, secondary alcohol. Like, say, if they give you a question on primary versus tertiary, um, if you don't, if you haven't been taught Lucas reagent, you don't need to worry about it in here. You can just use the the permanganate um, or the dichromate because what's going to happen here is that your permit your primary alcohol will oxidize, yay, um, and you go undergo color change from purple to colorless or orange to green. But if you have a tertiary alcohol, nay, it's not going to oxidize. Okay. So same with the secondary alcohol. Sec tertiary alcohol is the only one that doesn't react. Um, next one, you know, can I do some questions on the titration curve? Um, Johnson, I've got, dude, uh, I literally have two videos on titration curve. Can you go watch that, man? It's, it's literally, it's, it's too long. It's, it's just that. Titration curve, oh, that's not the best titration curve. Um, oh, it's my keyboard tilted. Um, you got, it just looks like this, and then you, oh my god, it's not even straight. Here we go, do, 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 do. and then you start off like that, then it goes up, 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 and then this is your halfway to equivalence point, this is your buffer region, this is your equivalence point, and this is your initial pH. You know, just look at my, look at those videos for titration curve. It's, it's really, it's very standard questions, um, but you know, already done like an hour of that. You can watch that later. Uh, what exams? Are, da, 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 da. Which question do we need to know for observations? Jinchen, what do you mean? What? Which equations do we need to know for observations? So, uh, observations. Um, so, for observations, you need to know this for sure. You need to know what products these makes. For this one, for sure. For carbonate, yeah. Holland's reagent, yeah, Benedict reagent, Benedict solution, yeah. For these, you just need to know, like, for example, aldehyde turns into the carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid plus a carbonate turns into the salt, carbon dioxide, and water. The acyl chloride makes COOH plus HCl. The alkanes, the alkane makes dibromal or, you know, bromo alkanes, for example. Um, the Lucas reagent, not quite. You're not expected to know that, but if you were interested, um, so let's say if you have a primary alcohol, which doesn't react anyway, if you have a tertiary alcohol like this, and then if you react with Lucas reagent, what it does is simply replaces the O with a C OH with a Cl. Okay, so Cls and OHs look really similar. Excuse my bad, bad handwriting, but yeah, um, yeah, and that, those are the ones that you can write equations for. You can't write equations for a chemical uh, for a physical test. You can, however, like say, if you want to demonstrate your understanding of amine turning to Lewis paper blue, what you could do is say you can just do, hey, here's my amine. I if I how do I show this is a weak base because it's partially dissociated in water, and that will give me OH minus, and that's the base. Okay. All right. Periodic table. Periodic trends. Okay. So Emily, no problem. So periodic table. So you got your periodic table, okay? As you go from left to right, um, the first thing we look at is atomic radius. Atomic radius decreases. First ionization increases. Electronegativity increases. As you go down the group, uh, as you go down the group, atomic radius increases. Ionization energy decreases. Electronegativity decreases. Okay. So why is that? Is because as you go across the group. Because there are two things you must talk about. You need to talk about the number of protons, 
because protons means nuclear how much charge how much nuclear charge is coming from the atom and then you need to talk about electrons shielding effect okay so not just electrons just shielding effect in general so shielding effect um, and then also you can talk about repulsion if you want because if there if there are more layers there are more repulsion forces um, so you need to talk about these like say for example if I compare um, carbon versus fluorine why is fluorine smaller is because fluorine yes has more protons this has more protons so what does that mean that means it has more nuclear charge and also if you look at carbon and fluorine this is 1s2 2s2 2p5 um, this is 1s2 2s2 2p8 uh, so 2 4 so this is 2 um, so one is to just make sure these are right. Yep, these numbers are right. So that's not yeah, it makes sense. So the outer electrons are all in the same outer shell, so they would have similar amount of shielding effect. But because this one has more protons, this is going to get bigger. Uh, sorry, this is going to get smaller. Okay, because the electrons are experiencing more force, so they're going to be pulled in towards them. All right, and then. Um, if you look at ionization energy, ionization energy is how much energy is going to, you know, how much energy is required to remove that one electron from one mole of atom at gaseous state. So if the if the if you think about it, if the atom in uh, sorry the electron in fluorine is experiencing more force of attraction, obviously it's, you are need you need to re give it more energy um, to take away one electron. Okay, so the smaller the atom, the more energy is required to get one electron out of the atom because they're so um, strongly attached okay and electron negativity same thing electron negativity is looking at the bonding um, is looking at the bonding electrons instead of the valence electrons but the content is exactly the same and then when you look at going down the uh, going down the group the atomic radius increases yes there's there's more protons yep because so there's still more charge coming from the nucleus but there's far more shielding effect okay there's more shielding there's more repulsion okay because there are more layers of electrons more energy levels of electrons and this guy completely outweighs the number of protons uh, yeah there are more protons but it's not as significant as the shielding effect so as you go down the group the atom will get bigger because you know more repulsion uh, more repulsion more shielding from the inner layers of electrons in inner energy levels of electrons so like say if you compare something like sodium versus um, potassium um, so this guy would have um, electrons further um, uh, yeah the, you know, the, pot the potassium will be bigger compared to sodium because you got more energy levels of electrons more repulsion Therefore, it's going to be bigger. If it's bigger, so it's obviously going to be easier to take away that one electron, so your ionization energy goes down. Yeah, so that's that. Uh, can you just give us an answer? For no, Sharon, I can't. Um, I mean, come on. Johnson, so. Uh, <laughs> I'm not ignoring him. I mean, if you Google it on the, on the thing, if you look at the. If you look at that. Um, what's that called? Um, on my YouTube channel, there's two videos on that. Alright, someone who says this is Johanna or Jessica sent me a question. Um, I'm just gonna get her to send me, send me screenshot. Alright, who else? Sorry, I'm just looking at Discord. Someone messaged me. No, I don't care about you. Uh, no, I don't care about that. Someone messaged me on Discord. I'm just could you DM me with help? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So the one Discord is crying. All right. Back to YouTube. Okay. So you got a formula f sheet for aqueous. Uh, Josh, you will get all of the equations other than the three that I've given you here. These are not provided. Yeah, and they're the most important, and we don't give them to you. Okay. <clears throat> and William, no, I'm not going to give you two. Um, how would you write a polarity paragraph for XCF4? Not XCF4, XCF, uh, XCCL2, F2. Okay. Um, so this is for Gloria. So XCCL2, F2. All right. So for something like this, like I'm not. You can you can draw the shape. You can draw the you can draw the Lewis diagram. It's going to look like this. 
um, these guys are gonna look like that and then um, and then it's gonna look like that so it just has a square planar shape and you know but when you get a question like this glory you don't need to I'm, I'm not even gonna bother drawing it to be honest because you can straight straight away see there are four different types of bonding to have a different color you got four, uh, not four you got two different types of bonding here so for anything to because you got two different atoms all right so you got this atom you got two chlorines and you got two fluorines so you got two types of bond you got xef and then you got xecl so these guys will give you different strength of bond dipoles okay so you got different strength of bond dipoles so if the yes this is a symmetrical shape you can talk about yeah there are four bonding pairs um, four bonding regions of electron density but then um, you got six all together four bonded so this has a square planar shape you repel each other as far as possible to minimize repulsion da, 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 da. but then you always need to talk about the dipole formation so there are two types of dipoles here and they will not cancel each other out because the electronegativity it's not the same okay um so karen said would you would be the same as xf4 difference yep so pretty much oh how would you say um karen that's not quite that um so for xf4 so if you think about the shape xf4 is non-polar okay because they cancel each other out perfectly but if you got xecl2 and f2 this is actually polar because you're different you've got different dipoles they're not going to go through they're gonna, not going to cancel each other out okay um sarah can you send me the screenshot please i my laptop died mine is actually legit broken so i can't um i can't actually see our school exams you can just sit um, send that through on discord and i'll go through that please if you want me to go through it thank you thank you any other questions who is this yeah just send just send it to me thank you thank you you'll be listening all right let me open this and let me copy it and let me paste it Ah, huh? you need question with us? This is just part of the titration curve. Oh, okay, let's go. Who added me on? Who's us? Uh, Bowen. <laughs> Sorry, someone just added me in Discord. All right, so let's go through this. Um, I do I have a calculator with me? Of course I do. All right, so this is one of our school exam questions. Um, so let's have a look at that. <clears throat> so blah 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 blah. So initially we have a weak base. Oh, look at that. We even told you it's a weak base. Um, just in case you didn't know. Um, and we're trying to add it in 0 0.0553 solution of monoproduct acid. Blah 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 blah. blah. Doesn't matter. Calculate the initial. So okay. So this is a weak base. So this is a weak base pH calculation straight away. So if you know it's a weak base, I just don't even think, and I just put this equation down, and I look for numbers. Okay, so I need Ka times Kw divided by the concentration of the base. What is the Ka? Well, I know the pK is 10.64, so Ka is going to be 10 to the power of 10 to the power of negative 10.64. Um, Kw is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14. Negative 14. That's the ugliest 14 you ever seen in life. And what is the concentration of the base? The concentration of the base is right here, 0 0.0496. So it's 0 0.0496 and then if you crunch those numbers in your calculator you will get let me do that right now yeah i wish my laptop didn't break so i can actually see the answers um times one times 10 to the power negative 14 divided by 0 0.0 oh my god i can't even read my own writing 0 0.0496 and then square root this and that will be 2.15 times 10 to the power of negative 12. And then I just negative log this bad boy and that will get me pH equals 11.7 rounded to three significant figures. Okay. Um, 
Done. All right. So for Maya, what is the difference between optical isomers and enantiomers? Optical uh, optical isomers, optical isomers and enantiomers are the same thing. Okay. So this is it's the same thing. Optical and enantiomers are the same thing. They just have a chiral carbon. So you have Y, B, C, D. You have a carbon that's bonded to four different groups, and then you how do you distinguish them? If you shine a plane of polarized lights through this particular solution, some um, some um, one version will bend one way, the other will bend the other way. And since we're already here on the topic of optical isomers, what you could do is look at the how you draw them. Let's say if I just draw name name the A B C D, so you can just draw them like this. Make sure like the first one is free. You can draw it however you want, right? But then once you draw the mirror image, it has to be mirror image. Okay, so it has to be, and the thing with optical isomers, you know, you can cheat. You just look at your hands. Your hands are optical isomers. You know, mirror images of each other, non-superimposable. Um, Sarah, I can you ask Susan? Um, she sent me that question. I seen that question before. I, I can't remember where I got it from. Okay. Uh, no, Alvin, I'm not gonna go through the entire topic with you. Yes, well, you added me. Run that M Q M C eight <laughs> William. So that's called Q equals MC delta T, um, MC delta T, um, MC, yes, MC delta T equation. I think that's what you want. Yep. So this is when, if you have, like, say, a bucket, like a, you know, a test tube, like a, a beaker like that, and then you have some sort of fuel, you're burning this, like, oh, it's going to give you a flame, and they have some water in here, all right, and then you want to figure out the enthalpy of the fuel. So what you need to do, this mass is the mass of water, like how much liquid you're actually heating up, or you know how if if the temperature drops or increases, what are we de what are we looking at? What what's temperature is dropping and increasing? Um, this is constant C is four point one eight. Delta T is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So this is literally just substituting numbers in. Okay, so mass times constant times tangent temperature you get q now just remember q is measured in joules so you need to convert that to kilojoules and then once you got that you can just use like you can you know how many mole like sorry you know how many grams of the fuel that you burned we don't like grams you can convert this to moles by using n equals small m divided by big m and once you got the mole you got the kilojoules you got the mole how do we figure out enthalpy enthalpy equals negative q divided by the mole so that's going to give you the answer in kilojoules per mole. Okay. Um, uh, explain the hydrolysis of between acidic and basic conditions. So that is a very, very important part of the equation um, for organic. Yes. Um, let's say if you have something like this, all right. So I'm just going to draw you something really random, um, just just something really simple. Uh, let's draw you a. What should I draw you? Let's just draw you that. Let's just draw you that. And H, for example, something like this. Okay. Now this is what I would highly recommend anyone to. Do. So this is an example of an of a of a protein. Please, I, I mentioned this so many times with people that I teach, and also on, on YouTube as well. So what you need to do is find this link, C O N, or C O O. Doesn't matter what it is. You want to break the single bond. And once you break a single bond, you have your monomers. So that's the most important thing. Just break the single bond. I try. I literally tell. The people in my class whenever you see c o n or c o o just get into the habit just break those bad boys you probably will most likely break that anyway once you break it you copy paste okay you copy paste sure it's, it's literally I, I i just i call that the triple c technique you you cut it you copy it you complete it okay so we've done the first part we copied it or we cut it now we copied it now we need to complete it all right, so now, so how do we complete it? We're doing hydrolysis, so this is OH, this is NH. So can you see I added water? This is OH, this is NH, now you got the monomers, okay? Now, to figure out acid hydrolysis, to do acidic hydrolysis, 
Now, what you need to understand in the protein, in the in the amino acid like this, this side of the molecule is acidic. This side of the molecule, oops, this side of the molecule is basic. Okay, so if you're doing this in acidic condition, so that means this side is going to react. So the other side doesn't change. You just copy it, and then when you get to this side. How does a base react? A base will pick up another hydrogen. Just not just a hydrogen, but H plus ions. So there, that's your acidic condition. For the basic condition, it's just doing the opposite side. For basic hydrolysis, you look at this side. Okay, so your as an acid is going to donate the H, and then you are going to be copying the rest as you saw them from the very top. And all you need to explain, you just say, all right. So I made these two products from um, hydrolysis, and the the acidic part will further neutralize in the base condition. The base condition, the base side will react with the acidic condition, and that's like the freest excellence in organic, if you ask me. Okay, so that's that. <coughs> oh, why 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 are people giving? Crap about my club. Um, oh my god. Why are people DMing, sending me a million questions through Discord? Um, okay, so let's put this on. Hopefully, I don't get put on. Alright, what is this? Okay, so this is aqueous. So now, so this is barely soluble solid, salt. So this is salt, okay? Um, Expression okay, so this is just literally dissolving it else LIPO4 LI3PO4 because it's KS means it's equilibrium, it partially dissociated to KR1 plus multiply by uh, multiply um plus PO4 3 minus. So just unfamiliar ions, but you know, you should know that LI is a um is a plus charge plus one um, because it's a group one element. Why does the solubility of this decrease when small volume of lithium fluoride is added to a saturated? Okay, so you have a saturated solution. So this is saturated. So in my beaker, I have majority of Li3PO4, but then I have some Li plus Li3 plus. I have some Li plus ions, and I have some PO4 three minus ions. Okay, so I'm adding lithium fluoride into this so i'm adding l plus ions and fluoride ions so straight away hopefully you can see that we have a common ion okay so this is a common ion li plus ions is a common ion so what does that mean is that this concentration would increase okay because there's already our, our uh, lithium ions um, in the beaker so that concentration will increase so that will cause the system to shift to the left um, so that means the solubility decreases because I'm making more of the solid. Done. Nice and easy. Okay, so I'm just answering some of the Discord questions. Oh my god, there's so many. Um, oh, okay. I should really start a YouTube, um, not a YouTube server, start a um, Discord server. If I can be bothered. Wait, am I doing this as well? Who sent me this? Am I doing this as well? Oh my god, there's so many questions. <laughs> so many questions. Okay, I lost track. Who sent me this? Is it you, Johanna? Or oh, I, I. I did the right one? Yes, I did the right one. Yay. Okay, let's go. Alright, next one. All right, this is the um, Suhin's question. Okay, so here, so this is the MC delta T equation. Um, so 7.15 grams of hydrated blah 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 added to 100 grams of blah 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 blah. So there we go, the massive solution 100. So this is M, um, C is right here, change of temperature to 4. Okay, so straight away we can do Q. Q equals M C delta T, so that's 107.15 times 4.18 times negative 2.9 because it went down so it's negative all right so if i do these numbers so that's going to be 107.15 times 4.18 times negative 2.9 
and that will be negative one two I'm blind I can't see no, one two nine eight point eight seven joules and I divide this by a thousand so that's about one point three negative one point three zero kilojoules rounded to three SF um, and how did I do this um, let's have a look where's my molar mass the molar mass is right here um, so the molar mass is um, to find the mat uh, to find the mole of the barium barium hydroxide so 7.15 divided by 8 uh, divided by 8 divided by 316 so this is my mole 7.15 divided by 316 so that will give me 0.0226 mole okay so you got your Q enthalpy equals negative Q divided by mole so it's going to be positive 1.30 kilojoules divided by 0.0226 don't delete your numbers from your calculator then you get the answer in kilojoules per mole I can't be bothered figuring that out you can draw that okay all right next one so I'm just attending some of the YouTube question uh, not the YouTube questions um, the um, what do you call it the discord questions Okay, I don't want a million people at me on Discord. Um, all right, so let's have a look at this. Um, so this is a question. Let's hide the answers. Answers hide. Okay, so for number two, so this is here. Calculate the enthalpy change for reactions. Blah blah blah. Now, when you get given the enthalpy of formations, what you can do is that you can just, you know, it's the enthalpy of the formation of the products minus the enthalpy formation of the reactants okay so that could be change of enthalpy now so the products is this and this so you can see this is the so product is negative 437 plus 3 times because there's 3 moles 3 moles MgO negative 602 as your products for the reactants KCl03 is right here so it's negative 391 now um, I think Rosemary's question is like, why do I not include this because by definition the enthalpy of formation of anything is the amount of energy released when you form that particular molecule from its constituent element. Mg is already an element. So what is the energy release when you turn Mg into Mg? It's going to be zero. So that's not included. Okay, and then you can substitute the numbers and then you work it out and that's your answer. Okay. Um, Next one, let me go find body questions. Um, oh, and Sarah, for that for that one question that we done earlier, you can just go. I don't know. I'll go back to the recording a little bit earlier. If there's time, I can. I'll do it again at the end. All right. So this is Mr. Bowen's question. Sorry, YouTube people. I'm just getting spammed with pictures of questions that people at my school are currently struggling to do. Right there. Oh my god, look at that formatting. That's top-notch formatting right there. Look at that number just sitting out here. Okay. Um, so calculate the enthalpy change for the below so uh, below um below using the data given. So this is Hess's law. This is Hess's law. So when you do Hess's law question, what you want to do is that you want to manipulate your equations. Let's get rid of that. You want to manipulate the equation so they look like this okay so what we want we want to hunt for certain features so first one i want feo which one has feo this one this one has feo i have i need two feo on the left i need i only have four on the right i have four on the left oh wait there's feo here abort 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 that mission all right so i'm gonna abort that mission the reason why i bought that mission is that you don't want to use um you don't want to look at a particular species that shows up in two equations. You do that at the end, okay? Because because otherwise you're gonna start be stuck in a limbo um, forever. All right, don't do that yet. Let's go look at O2. I think O2 is even worse. O2, there's O2 here, there's O2 here, and definitely not gonna touch that. Okay, so let's start with Fe2O3. Fe2O3. So I think this is probably the best one. Where the hell is my Fe2O3? Here it is. There's no other Fe2O3s anywhere sweet okay so there's no fe203 anywhere else so what i want to do here i need one moles of fe203 on the right i only have three moles i have three moles on the left so what i need to do if i number this reaction one two three four i want to reverse number three uh, number three number one and then divided by three 
Okay, so I want to put what's on the right to the left and what's left on the right, so and divide them by three. So this will be two over three if he three over four plus oh my god, it's that question. Oh god, this is I think this is our topic test. <laughs> oh this is I see the three over twos. Oh it's giving me nightmares. Um but yeah, this is just mathematically a, a really horrible question. Okay, and then this number is going to be positive 50 divided by 3. And you can figure that out. Okay, so why do we do that? Is that I want to have Fe2 of 3 on the right hand side, which is what I have right here. All right, so tick, I'm not going to touch this anymore. And once I got that, can you see I have got in my second equation, can you see in my in, in this equation here, I have no Fe3 Fe3 or 4, but yet I have Fe3 Fe3 or 4 in two of my equations. And once I manipulated my first one, I can't change this anymore. This will have to stay because this is my equation that's given me that positive, uh, that right hand side Fe203. So what that means is that um, I will need to get rid of this. How do I get rid of this? Oh, look, I have Fe304 on the right hand side. I need equal amount on the right hand side so for number two i'm going to multiply by two over three so that's going to be um eight over three i think people are already confused at this stage thank you Bowen, for this horrendous question um you shall be banned from this channel forever uh, <laughs> if if he's three or four but i mean if you can do this you can do any question and then look at this number this number is also going to multiply by two over three because that's all oh. ah fudge two over three okay now as you can see, this Fe three or four should cancel each other out, um, and I didn't write my Fe O. Okay, so this one I'm not going to touch anymore. I hope I'm doing this right because I'm doing this kind of rush. And then for number th now, what do, what else are we trying to do? Now I have Fe O. Look at my equation. I need two Fe O on the left. I currently have two and two third on the left. I need to have two. I need to have two thirds on the right hand side. Okay, so for my third equation, I'm going to multiply by two over three, because that will give me three over two Fe plus, oh uh, God, two over six O2, which is just one over three, what am I doing? Um, one over three O2, I hate you Bowen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark you down tomorrow when I do exam marking, <laughs> two over three O2. Um, so why do I do that? Because this that will cancel out this, with the, uh, not or two, cancel out this, two over three FeO. So we'll cancel out this, cancel out this, um, a bit later. All right. So now let's do the last step. Now I need to get rid of oxygen. So can you see I have two, uh, a third oxygen on the right hand side? If you look at the final equation, I have half oxygen on the left hand side. I have a third on the right hand side. Where's my hydrogen? Do I have any hydrogens anywhere? Nope. I see here. I have hydrogens over here. I have hydrogens over here. I need to get rid of the hydrogen. So for number four, I need to times one over three. That's going to be one over three hydrogen. Um, that's going to be one over six oxygen turning into one over three H2O. So this number is going to multiply by one over three. This number is going to be multiplied by two over three. So you're going to multiply add the numbers up, and they should all cancel out. Okay. Thank you, Bowen. I'm not going to answer your question anymore. <laughs> um, this is just horrendous. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to some YouTube questions. Um, Ahmed, what is? Wait. Go away. Um, stop asking me uni questions. Um, yeah, that's just some uni student trolling. You guys just ignore him. Uh, I finished, it'll take me 10 minutes. I think it's to do with the mixture. All right, all right, let's go. Thank God I missed something. Let's go to enjoy it. Please go through the organic one. Organic one? Um, what do you mean organic one? What does that mean? Who's making the... Yep, so that's, that's that. All right, are there any... I got spam with the... Oh, uh, and see him with that question that we did just now. Why did you add the mass? because it literally told you right here they told you it says the mass of the final solution 107.15 just add them together <laughs> because it's two two things mixed together okay 
Any other question? Why is it so late at night? Well, what can I do? Um, Hazel, please answer the question. You have time. What is this? Why can't you give it to me in one screenshot? Oh my god. I hate you, Annie. I hate you. Alright, so this is back to another Aquarius question. Now, that Hazel's law question just now, if you look at it, they're like, what the heck did he just do? Um, that's as it's as difficult as it gets in terms of Hess's law because of the numbering you really have to know what you're doing it's just an ugly ugly question um, so you can watch the vlog to see what I've done um, but you know time is precious here all right so here's a quiz question so I got blah 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 okay so this is where I use my technique um, to do these Miss Chan so if you um, have a look at have a look at these okay so my way of doing it, because I know there are teachers in my school that teach us differently, and I know there are certain um, textbooks that do this differently. I just always do it like, um, I just do it my way. I don't give a damn about how other people teach it. I just, this works for me perfectly. Um, so you got ethanol, uh, ethanol acid plus sodium hydroxide. And what does that do? That's gonna neutralize. So you're gonna make CH3COO minus plus Na plus plus water. Okay, so this is neutralization. You should be able to write this as a year 13 chemist. Okay, so I, I don't really care about these two. I'm more interested in this, this, this. Okay, so what do I know? I know I have 20 mL of ethanol acid, so I know the concentration is 0 0.0896. I know the volume is 0 0.02. So from this, I can figure out the mole. So the mole is just in equal CV. <clears throat> so 0 0.0896, 0 0.0896 times 0 0.02, and that will give me the mole in 1.79. Oh, fudge, why is this so far away? 1.792 times 10 to the power of negative 3. All right, let's figure out the concentration. Let's look at sodium hydroxide. I know the concentration is right here, 0 0.1. I know the volume is right here, 5 mils. So it's that's like 0 0.005. Um, liters so I can figure out the mole the mole is going to be 0 0.0005 moles okay so very small numbers so this is what I had at the beginning I mix them together and what's going to happen is that they're going to start cancelling each other out okay so can you see this number this this number here is low in mole number compared to this I mean 0 0.05 is smaller than 1.792 times 10 to the power negative 3 so what's going to happen here is that this will completely get neutralized I had 1.792 times 10 to the power negative 3. I'm going to use equal amount of the sodium hydroxide to neutralize that. And I will have, um, I'm not going to embarrass myself on stream, so I'm just going to do it on my calculator, just in case I get the answer wrong. So I get 1.292 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles. And then what do I make in the process? Every one mole, react with one mole, makes one mole. So this becomes 0.004. 0, 0.5 so you have got a buffer solution so in here this is where I just substitute pH equals pKa plus log base over acid so what is the base this is the base this is the acid so I'm just going to go to and the pKa was a pKa pKa is 4.76 so it's 4.76 plus log base right here 0 0.0005 acid right here 1.292 times 10 to the power negative 3. Figure that out, then you got the answer. Now, something that I normally do as an additional thing, because these these numbers I'm using are mole values, um, normally you should use concentration here. So what I do with the concentration, I just look at the volume. See, that's 20 mils, that's 5 mils. I just do this. I don't actually do this in my calculator, because if you do math, you understand there's no point dividing it by 0 0.025 if top and bottom part of the fraction are all doing the same thing. Okay? <clears throat> do you think I can do it the other way? Any? I'm not going to do it the other way. It's not worth my time. Um, why do you add the mass? I mean, yeah, sometimes you just use mass of water. Yes, you do. T on. Uh, okay, I think I'm just going to go back to YouTube. If anyone has any questions on YouTube, let's see. No, there's nothing. Nothing here. No, nothing on. Yeah, go away, Ahmed. <laughs> Enjoy uni. All right. So, what is this? 
what is this sorcery that Tiana Wu has just sent me? What is this question? Oh my god. Alright, so what is this? 150 mils of 0 0.75 HDL mixes 150 mils. What is the point? So the combined mass is 300. Okay. So this is, I just look at the question here. So when, whenever you see this, it's Q equals MC delta T. Uh, so what is the mass? So you got 150 mils with mix with 150 mils. So that means you have 300 grams. One mil is one gram. So it's 300 grams. Um, and times constant uh, comes C is 4.18. But they even told you the mixture is 300 grams. Um, times change in temperature. What's the change in temperature? Where is it? 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 Huh? No heat is lost. Oh, they don't. We don't. We're trying to figure out that. Um, we're trying to figure out the heat, right? Yes. Okay. So we don't know the change in temperature. Okay. So we don't know this question mark. So this number. Okay. So we're going backwards. All right. That's fine because they gave us the enthalpy. There it is. They gave you the enthalpy. So we know Q. We know that enthalpy. So we're going backwards. Q um, enthalpy equals negative Q divided by mole. And we know delta H, we know mole. How do we know mole? Because you have got given the concentration and volume of both of these, okay? Now you just pick one, because why do you only pick one? Because you, you look at this equation, look at this, look at this equation here. And then you need to be able to understand what this means, okay? So it just means when one mole of HCl react with one mole of NOH makes one mole of that, one mole of that, you release 58 kilojoules of energy. So I just need to figure out which, you know, how many moles of either of these one I have. And right now it doesn't matter because I can straight away see that these numbers multiplying by each other is going to give me the same mole number. Now, you may ask, what's going to happen? What should I do if the two numbers are not the same? you are always then going to use, you can do both of these mole calculations. For right now, I can calculate this mole by doing this. I can calculate this mole using those numbers. I can calculate the sodium hydroxide mole using those two numbers. If the numbers are different, always use the lower one because that is what we call the limiting factor. Okay, like think about this. Um, what's been released recently. Okay, so like say the iPhone 14 is coming out, right? So if you want to assemble an iPhone 14, you need the motherboard, you need all the other the screen and whatnot, okay? Let's say right now, if I want to assemble an iPhone um, cell phone, if I get 10 of the screens, but I only have two of the computer's hardware inside, how many iPhones can I make? You can only make two, right? So that computer hardware is what we call the limiting factor. You can have crap tons of screens, but they won't turn into iPhones. Okay, so you need to understand that. So we can just pick one, so it doesn't matter. Because so to figure out the mole, mole equals CV. So that's going to be 0 0.15 times what is the concentration? 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and that will give you 0 0.15 times 0 0.75. That will give me give you 0 0.0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.1125 mole. And I know the delta H, delta H is negative 58. So delta H is negative 58. So to figure out the Q, negative Q equals 0 0.0011125 uh, 1, 1, times negative 58. And that will give me, um, so negative Q equals negative 6.525 kilojoules. So Q equals 6,525 kilojoules, uh, joules, okay? So let's bring back here. So these numbers, these numbers equal to 6,525. So delta T must equal to 6,525 divided by 300 divided by 4.1a, and that will give us, wait, did I make a mistake somewhere? Why do these numbers look so weird? Let me try again. One. 150 mils, right? Yeah, 150 mils, 0 0.75, 0 0.15 times 0 0.75. Yep, um, times, I know the mole, I know the change in temperature times 58, 65, yep, times 1,000, note these numbers are right, and divided by 300, divided by 4.18. Yep, so the change of temperature is 5.20 degrees Celsius. And you're welcome. Oh, 
Okay, are there any other questions from anywhere? All right, anything else? So people, well, you know, all the people have my Discord access up. Oh, Aisha got one here, sorry, I didn't see that. Let's copy this, copy image, put it in here. I think it just, you know, it's just good to look at what other people, you know, the questions other people are sending and then you can try to do it yourself. So I think it's really beneficial. Just, just, you know, being exposed to the environment and just constantly see if you understood something. And the best way to understand something is, you know, to kind of teach it to others um, or see what sort of other, other people questions are. Okay, so identify the structure feature necessary for, okay, so in Antimus, you must have a chiral carbon. Okay, so chiral carbon bonding to four different things. Now, these two super long and strange words, it just means one of them rotate clockwise, one of them rotate anti-clockwise, okay? Um, so just one of each. Don't, wait, actually, how many does this have? How many enantiomers do we have? So this is an optical isomer. This can have a, so this is, sorry, this is a chiral carbon, chiral carbon number one. Chiral carbon number one, this is chiral carbon number two. So it can have um, two sets, so four altogether, okay? And peptides, uh, okay, so peptide from this, and I, that means I need to rub it out. Rub it out, rub it out, rub it out. Rub it out, rub it out, rub it out. All right, so the best way that what you want to do is to identify the functional groups, okay? So it's this guy and this guy, because that, those are the two that do condensation reactions. So we can just arrange them. We can just rearrange them and just copy paste. I think those people that are teaching my class must be so sick, sick and tired of me saying copy paste because it's literally just copy paste. Okay, so draw the dipeptide bond. So this is what we have right here. And then now I'm gonna rearrange this guy. I'm gonna rearrange it so you can see. Okay, actually, I'm just going to copy paste it here. And then I'll draw the other one next to it so you can actually see what's happening. Okay, so I'm going to do the condensation reaction. I'm going to put the nitrogen here. So this nitrogen is here, this one. Okay, so it's responding to this carbon. This carbon is bonding to an H and it's bonding to a COOH. Yeah, so I'm just changing the orientation a little bit. This C is the C, CH3, CH2, CH3. And then once we got that sorted, now we just do the magic of deletion of, you know, get rid of this, um, get rid of this, getting rid of OH, get rid of this H, and then this carbon bond to there. So the polymer, that you, well, the dipeptide length that you're gonna see is going to be something that looks like this okay so these questions are actually really good you know it just tr trains you to you just want like if you don't know how to do these just redraw them face the function group towards each other and this is your peptide link. okay so that's it done <clears throat> any more oh my god Bring, oh, um, Sarah, that first question that you sent, that um, that was a mistake, I think, in our marketing schedule, because this is the question they were asking, all right? Let's say the pH, if the pH is 6 point at equivalence point, you know, pH at equivalence on 6.11, and you have three indicators, which one would you use? Okay, I think our answers were so wrong, I don't even know what they were thinking. If your pH is us, you want the pKa of your, so these are the pKa of the indicators, A, B, C. What you want is you want the pKa to be plus minus one of the equivalence pH. So it's gonna be between 5.11 to 7.11. Now all of these guys sucks, except this guy. So this is the closest within that range, so you should go with that, okay? Just with the indicators. Yeah, just plus minus one of pH, and you should go with that. Okay. All right. YouTube time. Are there any more? Will would you be doing more streams? Um, I will. 
do more streams before the NDV exams. I probably won't do it the night before because it's not very helpful. Um, I'm only doing it now because I'll, I'll school have the exam tomorrow and I'm um, just giving them <clears throat> you know something they wake up to and something to listen to on the way to school just to you know something to, to think about yeah are there any more questions that anyone has so it, the, the the main thing that people tend to struggle with um, is you know with a quiz which one do I use organic how the heck do I remember all the flowcharts um, <laughs> You know how do I remember everything? It, it it could be a little bit overwhelming, but what you need to understand is that it, it just takes a lot of practice, um, takes a lot of grinding of the questions and to go from there. Glycerol aldehyde chirocarbon. Can we be a little bit more ex, ex you know what do you want with a glycerol aldehyde chirocarbon? <coughs> is acyl chloride to AMI substitution? Yes, Mister. DW Dante, acyl chloride, you have COCl, turning to amide, um, so turning to something like this, NH2. So what's going to happen is that you put this with NH3, and what's going to happen is that because the Cl really wants to leave, it's like, all right, bugger off, and then the nitrogen is like, hey, I got electrons, your carbon is really positive, I'm, I'm, I got electrons, so this one comes in, um, and the kicks out you know it kicks out it goes like this this is a mechanism if you if I'm is here you understand you know university mechanism stuff so what it means is that the the chlorine really wants to go and then once it leaves the carbon is really positive the neutron the nit nitrogen has a negative so what it means is going to come come in here attacks the carbon and then kicks out one of these and then you form this bad boy so this is called nucleophilic substitution okay so it's nucleophilic substitution <clears throat> um yeah thank you Ash. yeah no need to say 3d structure of the enantiomers of glycerol aldehyde uh why are we so obsessed with glycerol aldehyde <laughs> let me find a picture glycerol aldehyde Okay, so glycerol aldehyde looks like this. This is glycerol aldehyde. Oh, actually, no. this is a carbon here. This is an H. Yeah. Okay, so this is a glycerol aldehyde. If you, I think I'm just double checking. C three. Yep, that looks right. Okay, so this is your chirocarbon, and like I say, you can draw it however you want. You just the first one is just do whatever you want. Just draw it however you want. Um, it doesn't matter how you do it, but make sure you do the three dimensional. You know, one to the left, one to the right, and then you just 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 do that. That's totally fine. But when you do the mirror image, you got to make sure that everything is mirror image to one another. I'll put the hydrogen here just to avoid confusion. You know, point. I mean, just look at your hands. You know, they're pointing away from each other. Yeah, they see your thumbs pointing toward each other, and then your little fingers pointing the other way. All right. Um, shouldn't you be grinding league? What? Okay. So, anyone still need me? No? Discord is quiet no one's spamming me anymore I think everyone's pretty satisfied an hour into the stream I'll probably stop at 11 at the very latest but we can always stop early and let you go to bed because you do need a decent amount of sleep yeah <clears throat> what's the best paper what do you mean what's the best paper to study are you asking me this question Nine, 11 hours before your test, before your exam. Oh, you know. Just, just. <laughs> yeah, Nicholas, what's sleep? <laughs> sleep is overrated. Yeah, well, knowing you guys, no, none of you will sleep. 
Okay, or at least no one's spamming me questions on Discord. Yeah, no one's spamming me on Discord. That's good. All right, are there any questions? Any other questions? Come on, fire away. If you don't, um, if you guys are happy, then I'll just call that a day. Yes, Ryan knows you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Isha sending me something from Josephine. Let's go. Maybe I should start a Discord server. It's probably just convenient when people just spam me. Oh, but that might not be a good idea. I don't want to read questions every day. <laughs> All right, phosphate fast buffers, uh, selling, selling, whatever, yeah, whatever that is. PBS is a buffer solution commonly blah 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 lots of blahs lots of blahs okay so calculating the pH of the buffer okay so what are we adding we're adding it's made up of this and this okay so straight away I know they're trying to give you something that's really really um not so obvious like things that you've never seen before but you should be able to tell that this two things is ignore the water like if you look at NaH2PO4 versus Na2HPO4, if you get rid of the nitrogen as uh, the sodium, you can see this is H2PO4 negative. This is HPO4 two negative because the sodium is suspected the science. All right, so we can get rid of the positive two, positive one here. So you can clearly see these are conjugate acid and base pairs. So when you have conjugate acid base pairs, you have a buffer. So again, how do we calculate the pH of the buffer? We just go pH equals, actually they gave us Ka, let's use the other method. They gave us a Ka, when they give me the Ka, I normally do this, H3O plus equals Ka, um, plus times the concentration of acid divided by the concentration of the base. Which one's the acid? This one has more H, so this is the acid. Um, so it's this guy and they, yeah, and then H2PO4, so it's this guy, this is the acid, okay, and this uh, this one is the base. So I just need the concentration. Very easy, what's the concentration? This is a grams, that's a grams, this is a grams, um, this is a mole, so what you want to do, so the mole of the acid, I'm just gonna use that, I can't be writing, can't be bothered writing NaH2PO4 to slash 2H2O, that's just, you know, waste of time, 0 0.43 divided by 156, and then you find this concentration, it was well, sorry, not concentration mole, which is 3.56, the concentration of the base, 3.56 divided by 1358, then get the number. And then once you got this number, what you want to do, you're dissolving it in 500 mils volumetric flask. So the, the volume is 500. <laughs> I would assume it's 500, it doesn't say because it doesn't really matter because you are mixing the two liquid, I'm sorry, two liquid, you're mixing the two solids in one container, okay? So you can technically divide them by 500 or divide it by 0 0.5 liters, but you don't really need to. So you get this number, you get this number, you just substitute this one goes here, this one goes here, Ka goes here, substitute, you got this number, negative log, and that's your answer. Okie dokie. All right, anyone else? Uh, can you do an enthalpy question? Uh, we've done quite a few. Maya, we've done this one, MC delta T. We've done <coughs> the ridiculous census law. We've done enthalpy formation. We've done another MC delta T. Yeah, I don't. I I think we've done enough enthalpy calculations for tonight. <laughs> I think we've done enough calculations for tonight. Yeah. Let me check Discord again, just in case someone spams me. No, no one's doing that right now. Um. By the way, there is a. I'm. I'm sure you guys. Some of you might have come from there, but there is a NCA level. There's an NCA NCA level one two three Discord server which I'm in. Um, also with some other teachers like Miss Infinity Plus One and some other content creators. Um, so you probably easier if you want to 
send me pictures or whatnot um, through there if you have any questions I don't really check that discord that often but um, still you can reach me there okay anyone else 15 minutes from 11 like I said I'll definitely do another stream after term after the school holidays because <coughs> um it's 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 just more relevant to do it then um, no point doing it during the school holidays no one's going to be watching it nope I think the girls are happy that have been spamming me oh my god I'm just staring at the questions no we good Quarter, quarter to quarter to eleven. I think it's pretty good. Normally we start a little bit early. <laughs> Maybe I should stream some TFT. <laughs> oh god. No, I'm really not getting any questions anywhere. So that's a good sign. Can you surely give us a hint of any of the questions? I just gave you all the hints. I I I I told you it's 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 for structure bonding, electron configuration, periodic table trends, shapes of molecules, Lewis diagrams, polarity, intermolecular forces, enthalpy calculations, entropy and spontaneity. There you go. Three point four. 3.5 it's um drawings and names um optical isomers structural isomers distinguishing test condensation polymers acidic and basic hydrolysis organic flow charts have i said distinguishing test i can't remember um and then for aqueous weak acid weak base buffer ph um solubility KS equals x squared of 4x cubed, complex ion formation, common ion equation, predicting precipitate, and titration curve. Yep. Fios. No, what the heck, man? Draw out the flow chart for fun. Who does that for fun? I'm not insane, man. For fun. Now, however, that, that does remind you, remind me of something that that um, that I do encourage you to do. You know how sometimes you look at this, you like go oh, alkene, turn to alcohol. You know how some I know I know some of you started like this. Alcohol turn into aldehyde, um, aldehyde, and then you turn to carbon. And that's, that's rubbish. Don't don't study like this. What a waste of time that is. Do it like this. And I always start with the easiest one. Just start with B20. B20. B1. Start with this. Can you turn that into alkane? Okay. Can you turn that into the two major pro uh, two products? <coughs> major minor products. Prime uh, butan 10 butan 20 What does butan 10 oxidize to? What does butan 20 oxidize to? Can you turn butan 10 into a one chlorobutane? Can you turn the two chlorobutane? Uh, two um, and then one chlorobutane turned that to one amino butane and then you know this this whole thing um it, it's really just comes down to you know do you know the reagents and not and i'm not doing that for fun i'm not spending half of my half an hour doing that that's gonna be so messy um how do you join that discord i think i think i think i can put an invite in there how do i invite people invite people uh, this channel is private only members and roles okay so how do I I think a, which one is not a private one this one I think this one's not private um, invite people copy and can I put this in the chat? I think I think that will work. All right, just that's an NCA level one, two, three. It's literally mass English. It's everything in there. Uh, how do you compare Cl and Cl minus? Does the actual electron increase the shielding effect? 
Oh, look at Josh doing my work. Hey. Yes, he is correct there. Because if you actually Google, if you actually Google the size of chlorine and look at the size of chlor chlorine, uh, chloride, um, this one is almost like, from memory, like three times the size of this. Because we added in that one electron and that significantly increased the electron repulsion. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Same number of protons, more repulsion. No extra shielding because it's still in the, um, in the outer shells, um, so that doesn't change. And by the way, Josh, I'm not playing double up with you. You're not good enough. <laughs> not quite there yet in terms of skill level. Yes, atomic radius. see I have to hit master first that's gonna be a bit of grind and probably GM again <laughs> yeah. sweet I think everyone's pretty happy no one is sending me questions I guess we're pretty set okay well I guess that's us for tonight then. All the best with the exams tomorrow if you're from BDSC, all the best. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Um, is concentration just solubility? Well, FIWAS, the definition of solubility is the amount of things that can dissolve in a, in a solvent. So what is concentration? Concentration is moles divided by moles per liter. So it's how many moles can dissolve, divide, uh, can dissolve in a liter of solvent. <clears throat> so that's solubility, which is equivalent as concentration. So they share the same unit, but they do mean slightly different things. Last, last check on the Discord. No one's spamming anything. No one's spamming anything. So that's a good sign. All right, sweet. I will call that today. Have a nice one, guys. I hope you sleep well and um, all the best with your school exams. And I'll, yeah, I'll stream again when. Um, when the real deal is about to happen and hopefully we can um, do better all right see you later have a good one